hate to the Dubai debate. So I'm very sorry I can't participate. I'm in Australia and I'm unfortunately a little limited by the time difference. But it sounds incredibly interesting and very, very useful what you're going to be discussing. Both, of course, what is going to happen in the regional issue of what are you going to do after oil and gas, although I wouldn't worry too much because that is pretty far off, but also that you're going to be talking about nuclear and you're going to talk, talk about energy in general and, of course, uh, renewable energy. My pitch on this issue, and that's going to be my two cents worth in your conversation, is really that we need to recognize that the current approach that we're following just doesn't work. We're so focused on getting a few solar panels up on our rooftops that it makes us feel good, but because they're still vastly more expensive, they are not actually going to solve anything. They're just simply going to be niche products that make Western governments and other feel-good governments feel good, but it's not actually going to cut into the real emissions of CO2. So what we need to do instead of focusing on subsidizing inefficient technologies like solar panels, and that has been the policy over the last 20 years, and it has failed as such. What we need to do is instead focus on dramatically ramping up investment into research and development in making those technologies much cheaper. Imagine if we, over the next 20 to 40 years, could make renewables, could make solar panels cheaper than fossil fuels. We would have solved the problem. Everyone would move, also the Chinese and the Indians and everyone else. Not because they were green, not because they were forced to, but simply because those technologies were cheaper. So the solution is, yes, go on with what we're doing right now, which unfortunately means using a lot of fossil fuels because they power everything we like, but dramatically ramp up investment in research and development into green energy technologies so that over the next 20 to 40 years, we will be able to make an energy transition. It's much cheaper than what we're proposing today. It's much more likely to lead to an energy revolution. And ultimately, of course, it's much more likely that if the economics is right, that we will actually transition to a post-fossil fuel economy. Those are my two cents. I wish you all the best in Dubai with your debates and best of luck here from Australia. Take care. Bye.